Hi, I'm Paul Vogt of PVX Guitars. Look at this beauty. This is a PVX double cutaway kit that was put together and finished by a customer right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. The builder has been kind enough to loan it back to me for a photo shoot that we just completed. Let me tell you what, from the front and from the back and from every other angle, this is a gorgeous example of what can be done even by a first time builder. So we're back again with another short instructional video to help you to build your own heirloom quality electric guitar. Today we'll go over some sanding techniques that you'll need to know in order to give your guitar that final sanding just before we get it ready for color. Okay, so let's get started. How many times have you heard sand with the grain? Always sand with the grain. Well, to understand what that really means, think about petting a dog. Monty likes to be petted like this. Monty doesn't like to be petted like this. Sanding the fibers of a piece of wood is exactly the same thing. Just think of that analogy and, and you'll, you'll get it right every time. Okay? Most people understand that the phrase sanding with the grain means to sand this way and not this way. With the grain and not across the grain. But let's talk about the end grain. Think about these fibers in the wood here. We always want to sand the edge of the guitar this way, which tends to smooth the fibers out, rather than this way, which tends to break them off. And remember one really important rule about sanding end grain. When you sand end grain, only sand in one direction, meaning if you're going to sand down, sand down. Do not sand up. And don't go back and forth. It's repeated strokes down and off the wood and down. Let me just say a few things about your workspace. First of all, when you do your final sanding on the guitar, find a piece of carpeting to lay down. Believe me, there's nothing worse than working hard on sanding the top of your guitar, only to turn it over and find out that by sanding away, you've created marks in the back of your guitar. So always sand on a piece of carpet. Sanding a really fine musical instrument is a process. The steps have to be done in the correct order in order to get the best result. When we sand a guitar for finished sanding, we're going to start with 120 grit, which is mostly shaping the wood and taking out any dents and scratches. Then we're going to go to 220 grit, which is smoothing the wood. 320 grit, which is really smoothing the wood. 400 grit, which is almost the last step. And finally, we're going to use something like Scotch-Brite to get the final smoothness on the wood. So here we go. First of all, when you're sanding a flat area of the guitar, you have to use a sanding block. This, is, this material happens to be Corian, left over from a countertop project. It's very hard and very flat. You can use a flat piece of wood, it doesn't really matter. The important thing is always use a sanding block when you're sanding on a flat surface. One thing that you might be tempted to do, which I wanna warn you against, if you have a low spot in the wood, don't try to sand that low spot out without your sanding block. On the back of the guitar, any low spot that you start to sand is just going to get lower. And when you put a high gloss clear finish on that, it's going to look awful. So make sure that no matter what you're trying to work out of the wood, use your sanding block. To sand this part of the edge, we're going to sand downward and with repeated strokes, and we're not going to sand backwards, so we sand like this. Okay, and we'll switch out to um, 220 and 320 and then 400 and finally some Scotch-Brite. Another thing to know about sandpaper is that most people will tend to use it way too long before they throw it away. Keep your sandpaper sharp. Keep it clean by knocking the, knocking the uh, residue off of it and replace it frequently. You know, sandpaper is cheap and it just works a whole lot better if it's fresh. So now I wanna talk about these highly curved surfaces here. There's a technique that'll really work well to sand those areas. You don't have to worry about using a sanding block. Um, and so here it is. Take a piece of sandpaper and fold it on something sharp, tear it off so you have a strip, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to pull the sandpaper between our fingers and the wood and always in one direction. It'll wrap right around that curved edge and just do a wonderful job of putting a very fine finish on that. 
This, this can work in concave surfaces like this. And you can actually move your hand downward as you pull to kind of sweep it. It'll work on convex surfaces like this. It actually works like a dream on a surface like this. And always remember the direction that you're sanding. In this area here, because of the direction of the wood fibers, I would want to go like this and never like that. Okay, that's sanding against the grain. Okay, for sanding the top of the guitar, remember on the PVX guitar, this whole region here is really a flat plane. It's inclined to this direction, but it's the middle section is, is flat. So we're going to sand like this. Now, I'm not so hung up on just one directional sanding when I'm sanding on a flat surface. But actually, this would be sanding with the grain in this case. Okay, now let's talk about a tricky area to sand. That's this sharp edge around the outside of the guitar. We want it to stay sharp and avoid rounding it off. So a great way to follow the rules and always sand with the grain and use that technique that we saw on the edge of the guitar is to do the same thing on the top of the guitar. Pull it this direction, but pull it upward at the end so that you're not rounding over the, that sharp edge. It takes a steady pressure and always pulling in the same direction. I can keep my finger right in that groove and avoid rounding the edge over. As long as I'm pulling as long as, long as I'm pulling upward at the end of the stroke like this. This actually works very very fast. It's very uh, it's a it's a good technique for sanding on curved edges particularly from here to here, which is mostly end grain. And you can see I kind of move my hand in this direction as I'm pulling the sandpaper. This really does an amazing job of sanding out any little nicks or dents. And it keeps the edge nice and sharp. So if I was to use the same technique in this area, I would be doing this, but that's breaking my first rule on sanding across the grain. So I'm not going to sand this way here. Instead, I'm going to take a new piece of sandpaper and sand in this valley, just with, carefully with my fingertip as a sanding block. So you can take a piece of sandpaper and fold it a few times so it's somewhat stiff and kind of curl it around in a nice curled shape, and then just use it carefully in this area to sand that little valley, once again making sure that you don't round off that sharp edge. Okay. Now because of the shape of the wood, pulling this direction is going with the grain. If I was to be going this way, I'd be kind of going uphill and, and therefore, I'd be kind of going uphill and therefore against the grain. So when I sand this direction, I'll stop here with strokes in this direction and I'll come in this way from up here. Once again keeping in mind how those ends of the grain fibers end when they come out of the wood. Some of the real curved parts of the guitar take some really fine sanding but just keep in mind that you don't want to round over that edge. So this is actually curved in this direction but straight in this in this direction it's actually a straight line. So I'm going to sand downhill to here, but I'm going to stop midway, and I'm going to sand this direction down here. This is the only way to do it and avoid sanding against the grain. If this doesn't make any sense, just go back to that dog analogy. To, to sand this way would be petting the dog backwards up, up from tail to head. And we sand this direction here. And we say in this direction here. So we're going to repeat that process with 220 grit, 320 grit, 400 grit, and finally some scotch bright. And by that time, this surface is going to be smoother than you can imagine. Here we have a neck that will require some finished sanding in some of these highly curved areas. Uh, once again, we'll use that same technique that we talked about earlier. For example, in the headstock, we're going to 
do this trick. Pull the sandpaper up on that edge. We'll do the same thing, if you can see that, we'll do the same thing here. All right. For the more highly curved areas of the guitar, like this feature behind the headstock, we're going to do the same technique but with a narrower stripe of sandpaper and just pull up. Okay? It takes some care, but it does a really nice job of sanding these inside curves. After we've sanded the entire guitar with grits all the way up to 400 grit, we're going to sand it one last time using all the same rules, but we're going to sand it with Scotch-Brite. Now, Scotch-Brite is kind of a tough material, but so we're going to cut it with a tin snips. It just cuts like cloth when you use that. Okay, so once again, all the same rules. We're going to go smooth it always with the grain. And by that time, you've got a really beautiful, smooth finish. With Scotch-Brite, you don't have to use a sanding block because it's not going to remove hardly any material. All of these sanding processes have done a good job of creating a really flat surface, but on a microscopic level, you have a lot of broken off fibers that are packed into the wood. These fibers have to be removed from the surface of the wood before we put finish on it. So we're going to do it ahead of time using denatured alcohol to get rid of those fibers so they don't mess up our stain. This process is called raising the grain. Raising the grain looks like this. You take denatured alcohol, and you wet the surface of the wood. You're just going to get the surface good and wet, saturated. As that denatured alcohol wets the wood and evaporates, it's going to absorb into any loose fibers on the surface of the wood and cause them to swell. They'll stand straight up. And after the alcohol dries, you rub your hand over it, you can really feel those loose fibers standing straight up off the guitar. Take a, a coarse cloth and just scrub them off of there. And I'll scrub them across the grain because I want them to break off rather than lay back down into the guitar. So rub crosswise with a coarse cloth and you'll have cleaned out all of the broken off loose fibers in the, on the surface of the wood and it's ready for stain. If you didn't do this step of raising the grain, all these fibers would stand straight up as soon as you put water-based stain on it. And you, you don't want that because it's going to ruin the finish. We'll raise the grain on the back, the sides, the top, the neck, and over the entire surface of the guitar. Raising the grain and you're finished.